Today we're going to be focusing on Jan Hendrik Schultz's portraits, similar to the one that I've got here on my left, where he's captured a lot of light and expression and tone on the face using a variation of tones and hues within his artwork. So today we're going to be looking at how Sheltimer has used tonal variations throughout the artwork and how he's used dark lines to give a lot of depth to the portrait and to be able to give form to the figure and using white on only the brightest highlights throughout the painting, mainly on the collar and the shirt and the smallest bit of the beard and our darker browns and blacks in parts of the ears and the shoulders and the outfit and in the background to make the figure stand out but also to give a form and definition to the figure to make it more a well-rounded figure and also give it more expression within his face. You can see he's used dark sections to really make those facial features stand out. to be laying in my darkest tones first and then watering down my ink so that I can get lighter tones and shades to put in over the top of those dark tones and then fill in the rest of the face to complete the portrait and so I've put my darker tones in already a little bit using a bit of pencil shading and hatching to just outline where I think those tones should go so I'm just going to put some ink over the top of it and of course this is going to blend the pencil that I've already got on there because it was a water soluble pencil. You don't have to do that. I just did it because I, that's what I had lying around and it's just for my outline anyway. So I'm using a pink coloured ink just because I like the colour. There's nothing fancy about it. It's okay if it drips because I kind of like that messy sort of effect. You don't have to. You can do this with something like paint or oil paint or acrylic whatever you would like. So it's going to make that nice um, drippy purple effect in my artwork which I kind of like and it's okay if I don't like it because I can always go back over it and wipe it away with a paper towel or something like that. But I'm just going to work in stages and lay in my dark tones first and then go over the top with like a light wash of the watered down ink. Similar to how we were working with our last artwork, I'm going to go over the top of my darker shades but also working with my mid-tone. So I've got my darker shades already in, so I'm just going to sort of wash over the top of them with the ink that I'm currently using. going to knock in a solid blue ink background to give my figure something to lay against so this will be more the opposite of the artwork that we did So 
I'm just going to go in and pick out small details that I need to overlap so my other tones in my artwork and just give it a watery layer over the top. It might not stick extremely well but that's okay because I'm going to go over the top and use my Posca markers to pick out some details. <laughs> And I'm just going to go through and pick out details that I had in my original sketch to highlight particular areas of the artwork. When I'm happy with the amount of marker that I've got on my canvas, I'll stop it there. And I think I'm happy with the position that I'm at now. I've used the dark ink here to highlight the underneath of the snakes and the hair that I've put in the artwork. And then I've used the lighter colours and the darker colours of the Posca markers to pick out some of the snakes that I've got there just to provide a little bit of extra detail in there and to give it definition from the forefront of the canvas which is the face primarily. So I've loaded my brush up with some ink. I'm using blue on top of pink so it might bleed through and get a sort of purpley colour. I've already pre-wet the page and used some ink as a background colour, as a solid colour to lay my portrait on already. So I'm just going to start by laying in my darkest tones like we were doing in the previous portrait, but this one doesn't have an outline so we're just going to do a really quick rough sketch with the ink by laying in our darker tones. So I'm going to lay my darkest tones in so that I'm ready to lay my lighter tones in over the top. I'm just topping up my brush and my ink whenever I feel like I need to or my brush gets dry or we start to fade out colour. So I might just go back over the top of those to fix those up. We're going for a more impressionist abstract look for our work today and I'm just using the picture that we were doing before as a bit of reference for where I'm going to lay my tones in. You could use a photograph or an artwork from the gallery, maybe one of the ones that we've seen in the video today. And things 
are sort of looking a little bit abstract so far, but that's okay because this is just where our darker tones are going to sit to give our portrait some dimension and a bit of shape to it so that we're able to discern the figure from the background. And we're just working with those darker tones first. And then when I'm ready, I will start moving on to my lighter tones when I feel like I've got enough definition. To move into our lighter tones, I'm going to take some of the blue ink I've been using for the figure and just watering it down by adding water to it. Slowly, slowly until I've got enough in my palette and I'm happy with that. And this might just act as a base to work with in between my mid-tones and my darkest tones in my portrait. So that we're getting some form of expression in there like we're focusing on today. And so these dark tones and light tones are going to help you form shapes but also help you capture expression because you'll be able to get those really dark sultry tones that will communicate some form of expression within the face because you might be drawing somebody who is angry or may not be smiling in some retrospect but also for other expressions you may need to capture the hollows of the cheek like in the portrait that we were looking at before or you may need to capture somebody who's standing in quite bright lighting like in direct sunlight and for that you'll be casting quite sharp shadows that will be giving you direction within the face and you'll need to communicate that in your painting. reason I've used a lighter colour that contrasts with the blue here is because I like my figures to stand out in more abstract paintings and it will make outlines and things like that stand out more. As you're working towards the end of your painting, because this is just a scrap demonstration, I'm just going to draw over the top of it, I'm going to use a Posca marker and just outline certain parts that I would like to highlight. I might alternate between a light blue and a dark blue and I might add in details like an eye or a nose just to give them some extra dimension and definition. Continue on for the shape of the forehead and then I might come out and draw the snake's head. Just making slight alterations where I need to and then I can start picking out details to form shapes.
So similar to how we were working with our original demonstration, this will just help deepen. I'm just going to pick out where my darker shadows might be, so they might be in the forms of the snakes for the hair, or in the sides of the cheekbones to create deeper hollows for the cheeks. I'm just going back and grabbing more ink whenever I feel like I don't have enough and my brush is too dry. As you can see, I've used my dark Posca marker, the dark blue one, to outline where my darker shadows for my snakes or the hair would be in the figure, similar to my original picture. And I've highlighted my lighter shades on top of the snakes to give it a little bit of form and dimension. It's a little bit abstract, but if you hold it away from you, you can sort of see where your shadows and your dark sections of your tones would be. And this will give you a little bit of tonal variation throughout your artwork. And then I've used the light Posca marker to give a little bit of detail and interest to the artwork. So I'm going to use a bright orange ink and I'm gonna go across the artwork in a zigzag pattern just because I want it to be a little bit more abstract and give it a bit more dimension to the artwork and I think it'll be a bit more interesting if I do that. So I'm just gonna load my brush up with a bit of orange ink. And I'm just gonna go across the page, just quickly. And I think that helps to highlight some of the details in the artwork and it brings the background forward more and it highlights the bits that I've used with Posca marker. Thank you so much for joining me for this episode of Art at Home and if you do complete any of the activities that we have covered in this episode or in any of our other episodes for your own interpretation of them, don't forget to use our hashtag GibbsArtAtHome and I'll see you in the next episode.